everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Huck. Today we are doing my end of year on haul. So at the end of the year, every year, I always tell you about what are the books that I am unhauling from everything that I read uh, or attempted to read that year. So these are all the books from book, either the books that I finished and decided I am not keeping or most of them are books that I DNF'd throughout the year. Uh, so anything that I am unhauling from my 2021 reading. I have 35 or 36 books here. Um, but I'm going to try and go through these pretty quickly because a lot of these I have already talked about at length in other situations. Um, so first we're going to start with the books that were on my most disappointing books of the year list. So from that, which of the books are the ones that I'm going to be unhauling? Then we'll talk about all the books that I DNF'd that I'm unhauling. And then finally, books that I did complete, but were not on either of those lists, but I am unhauling them. So the two first two categories I'm going to be pretty quick about because I already have places where I've talked in depth about why I'm unhauling these. Um, so for my most uh, disappointing books of the year, I will put that video in the description. And for my DNFs throughout the year, I've been doing uh, DNF videos where I talk about why I've DNF'd the books that I have, so I will put those in the description as well. Okay, so first we're starting with the ones that were on my worst books of the year or most disappointing books of the year, uh, which were The Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee, just a surprisingly bland book. Um, then we have Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins, which was my least favorite book of the entire year. Uh, next is Blanca e Roja by Anna Marie McLemore, which is very so disappointing because I have liked other things from this author and I was hoping to just enjoy their whole body of work. Uh, then we are getting into DNFs, so these next few are ones that were DNFs but were also in my most disappointing because these were my most disappointing DNFs. So we have the Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I actually probably will be giving this to um, my dad because I feel like he might like it. Because uh, we he reads fantasy, we have a little bit of overlap but also kind of different reading taste and he might enjoy it more than I did. Um, so as also all of these books, whenever I unhaul books, I either distribute them among friends and family or I donate them to um, my local used bookstore which supports my local library so if anyone's curious as to what's happening to these books that is what happens to them okay uh continuing on next is uh she who became the sun by shelly parker chan then half sick of shadows by laura sebastian just for some reason this book just deeply frustrated me <laughs> Uh, next, my last DNF of the year and also just the last book I was reading uh, because I decided I did not want to spend my last day of the year reading it and I also did not want to bother bringing it into 2022, which was The Wolf and the Woodsman. Just like a very poorly done enemies to lovers romance. I'm stacking these on my lap and I'm realizing I'm going to regret this in a second. Uh, then we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab which was my first book of the year for 2021, which was a DNF, and I think that just told me what I needed to know about my reading for the rest of the year. And then Mother Ocean, Daughter Sea, uh, which just like, I don't know what this author was trying to set up with this romance because it, I just was like, I don't, I so dislike the love interest already. I don't know how you can come back from that. All right, so those were the things that were in my most disappointing video. Now we're getting into my other DNFs that were not in that video. These are all kind of dusty from sitting in my room, so please ignore that. All right, so a few of these were also in some vlogs that I did. I did two vlogs that were, will I DNF it? In which most cases, the answer was yes, I did DNF a lot of books. Uh, but there were some exceptions. Um, but 
there were quite a few books also this year that I was just trying to get off my shelf and just like make a decision about. Um, so we have The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. This was in one of those vlogs. Uh, I can't remember if this one was or not, but The Gossamer Mage by Julie C. Julie E. Zernetta. There we go. Uh, we also have The Gilded Wolves by Rashni Chakshi, uh, which I was enjoying and was going to finish and then I spoiled myself for something and I was like, oh, if that's what happens, do not want. <laughs> so that's how that one got DNF'd. Um, then, oh, these got mixed up, so there isn't really an order to these at all, but we have The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams. Then we have People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. Uh, which is a book about books that I was hoping to love and it just was like, mm, not my vibe. I didn't get very far into that one. Uh, then I got Beautiful Darkness by Fabian Vel Velman, there we go, and Kerskot. 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 I think, I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but this is actually a graphic novel which is incredibly short and yet somehow I still like could not force myself all the way through it and DNF'd it. Um, I just was like, what was the point of this story? It's supposed to be like a deconstruction of fairy tales. And I was like, I don't see how this is deconstructing things. It just seems very pointless to me, but you know. Okay, then we have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is a Peter Pan retelling. And one of the things that I really solidified for myself this year was I don't like Peter Pan retellings. I read a surprising number of them. I think I tried to read at least four or five different Peter Pan retellings. I only finished one of them. Uh, so I don't really think it's the fault of the book. I think it's a me thing that I just don't like Peter Pan retellings. Uh, then we have Savage Her Reply by Deirdre Sullivan, The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee de Vakaruni, Miranda and Calvin by Jacqueline Carey, which, uh, you know, I, I really want to love things from Jacqueline Carey because I really like her writing, but I'm starting to think that maybe I just don't like the way that she tells stories. Um, and I just find there seems to be a real distance from her characters as well. That's a thing that I complain about in a lot of books, I think, it's just like not, it's just like feeling a real distance or alienation from the characters. Uh, and then we have The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moores. Uh, and this was another one that I didn't get very far into. I just kind of realized pretty early on that I was like, not my vibe. This is not, it's just not gonna be a thing for me. Um, even though it's a it's a very interesting and quirky like unusual premise to it which is intriguing but I just think it was not going to be my vibe. Okay this is why I regret putting things in my lap because then I have to take them back out. Give me a second. All right now we are still in the DNS because that is honestly the largest part of this. I just hit my hand so but it's all right, I'm fine. <laughs> Anyways, next we have Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston, which I love this cover so much. Um, but this is kind of an apocalyptic, this is like apocalyptic fiction, which is a thing I have realized hmm, semi-recently maybe, I'm not sure, but I have realized I don't really like. Sometimes I can get on board, once in a while I can get on board with a post-apocalyptic book, but I do not like books that are happening like during an apocalypse. And that's kind of what this is, sort of an, an environmental apocalypse that's happening. Um, so just not really my kind of thing. Then we had Or What You Will by Joe Walton, uh, which is a book about books that you know, I've discovered there are certain kinds of books about books that I like and certain ones that I don't. This one did a lot of the things I don't like in books about books. And also I just was like, I don't care about anything that's happening. Uh, next we have Master of Crows by Grace Draven. This is a fantasy romance which just hit a lot of romance tropes that I personally don't like. Uh, so this just was not going to be a win for me. Next up we have Tree of Ages uh, by Sarah C. Rothel, uh, which is 
a fantasy is it it's a fantasy book about a girl who's been a, living as a tree and then turns back into a person and is trying to figure out what happened um which like sounds like a thing i would love which is why i picked it up but i ended up just not being interested I, like there was this is not one that i had a ton of um like reasons why i didn't like it it was more that i just was not interested i was just kind of bored while i was reading it um this one there is not a video yet where i have talked about why i dnf'd it uh because i haven't done my winter dnfs and this was in december but that will be coming in march so you gotta wait a little while but it's coming eventually all right next we have dark matter by blake crouch uh which is just another example to me of like why i don't enjoy thrillers um this has things about it that on you know, as a premise you would think i would like because it is about memory and kind of the nature of memories and what is like a true reality kind of thing uh which is interesting to me i also wanted to read it because people had said like oh if you like middle game which i loved you would probably also like this and yet did not like it um it kind of reminded me of like an action movie with less actual action in it uh but i'm not very into action movies and i also just don't enjoy thrillers i tend to get really bored during thrillers which i feel like is the opposite reaction of what you're supposed to have um all right and then okay two more books left in this category next up we have into the heartless wood by joanna ruth meyer this another one that i was like i should love this because it is like forest fantasy it's supposed to be about this like magical forest and sort of a gender swapped beauty and the beast between uh our main character and like a tree person so that sounds great but again it's just like the execution um i didn't really like any of the main characters it was not as atmospheric as i was hoping for that's that's what i remember from why i dnf'd it uh and then we have Thief's Magic by Trudy Canavan, another one where I got, I didn't get very far into it, but I was just like, mm, not my vibe. Okay, so my camera is flashing at me, uh, so I'm hoping that I will be able to get through my last few books before the battery dies. All right, so our final category are books that I actually finished uh, that I am unhauling. Okay, so we're gonna go quick. First up, we have Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic. Not as gardeny as I was hoping for. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was at the time when I read it, but not something that I would ever come back to. That's honestly what most of these are gonna fall into is things where I'm like, it was fine, but I'm never gonna reread it, so I don't need to like keep it. So in a similar vein, The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. I would definitely check out other things from this author in the future, uh, but I don't think I would ever reread this book. Also, I ended up listening to it as an audiobook, so if I was going to read it again, I would just listen to the audiobook again. Then we have The Story of Silence by Alex Myers. I think I was just hoping for more from it. There were a lot of things that I did like about this, uh, but I also, it was like, I just, I'm not gonna come back to this, so I don't need it. I'm hoping somebody else will find it and really enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is. Uh, okay, then we have Path of Fate by Diana Farrow Francis. I, at first, wasn't going to unhaul this, but then I decided, you know what, I'm not going to finish this series, so I don't need to keep a hold of this. Uh, then we have three books in a series, which are the first three books in the Night Runner series by Lynn Flewelling. So that is Luck in the Shadows, Stalking Darkness, and Traitor's Moon. Um, I think I DNF'd the third book, uh, but this trilogy, I honestly don't remember too much about it because I read these at the beginning of the year, but <laughs> it just like didn't grab me it was fine but it was never one that i like really felt compelled to read and i just didn't really want to like get further into it and then the final books that i have are kushiel's dart and kushiel's chosen the first two books in the is this called the kushiel's dart trilogy oh this is dusty there's dog hair on this and everything okay um 
but so I, I completed this book I DNF'd this one um, I think that this series I really like Jacqueline Carey's writing um, the world that she's created was very interesting but my main problem is that I think that she focuses much more on the plot and the world building and not as much on the characters and I really want more of that character time, character work, um, or not that she doesn't do character work but I want more of that like closeness to the characters and more about the character dynamics. I didn't really care as much about the politics of the world. It does have very interesting and like intricate complex politics so if you like that kind of thing maybe you'd like this but it just wasn't like that's something that I can appreciate but it's not my main focus I wanted more of like character for me uh, but I do have a full review of uh, Kushiel's Dart if you would like to know more about my thoughts on that one all right so those are all of my books that I am unhauling from my 2021 reading I would love to know uh, if there is anything from your 2021 reading that you have unhauled or are going to unhaul, uh, what are the things that you are like letting go from the year to start the 2022 fresh? Uh, but thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!